Hi there, as you probably know, I really like micro bits. I also really like displays and put the two together and I'm a very happy person. So uh, this is an interesting display. It's cost about 10 pounds. It's a color LCD display, 1.8 inches diagonally across, 160 pixels that way, 128 up and down. And it's got a slot so you can plug it straight into your micro bit. It also has pin headers so you could solder it uh, solder pin headers on and attach it to a breadboard and use another controller like an Arduino and there are libraries available for the Arduino. Um, there is a library available for MakeCode for this. Unfortunately, it only works in the old version of MakeCode, but it does work and instructions are on the blog. Uh, it just very simply slots in and you can start programming it with MakeCode. So let's plug it in, see what happens. There we go, it's lighting up, it's initialising and off we go. You'll find all the instructions you need to get going with this LCD display on the blog. And the two really important things you need are a link to the old make code editor and a link to the address of the package that you need to add that give you the blocks that make it work. And you'll have a look here. Here's a couple of projects I've made with this. The first one is a temperature uh, logger, uh, maximum minimum temperature logger with a, with a graph. And you'll see that working in a moment. Um, we'll just have a quick look at some of the blocks that it gives you. The thing I quite like about this project and this uh, LCD display is it gives you some blocks, makes it a little bit easier to drive the LCD display, but it doesn't entirely protect you from some of the kind of low level things you need to know about driving LCD displays with very limited hardware, like a microcontroller, such as a micro bit. You have to initialize the screen. So when you start, you've got to initialize the screen, you've got to clear it. Um, you have to think about things like setting the backlight level, what color you want to fill it. And the other thing to bear in mind is nothing appears on the screen until you actually uh, write it to the screen. So you can update the whole screen using the uh, block, where is it, down here? No, send display data, that will update the whole screen, but it's really slow. So if you just want to update a small amount of information on the screen, it's much better to instead use the show windows display data block and that you can specify coordinates of just an area of the screen that you want to update on the screen. And that's much, much quicker. And that's what we use in this project here. So let's see this temperature project work. Right, this is a program that logs temperature. So it uses the micro bits built in temperature sensor and it logs the current temperature on the display. So it says temperature now is 26 degrees. It also stores maximum and minimum temperatures, but it also plots a graph across the bottom. So if I put my finger on the processor on the back of the board, which is where the temperature sensor on the micro bit lives, you'll see the temperature start to go up. It's climbing up now. You'll see the maximum temperature has gone up and the bar graph goes up. And if I let go of it now, you should hopefully see it start to fall, but the maximum temperature will stay. It's still saying maximum 30, minimum at 26, and the temperature will fall. Um, it plots across the screen. When it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning, but it changes color, which is quite nice. So you can see a little bit of, well, I say historical temperature data. It's not very old, really, is it? It's only recording for a few minutes, but you could change the program so it records temperatures much more slowly. I'm doing this as fast as the update of the LCD will allow. So it's getting to the end of the display now. You'll see what happens when it gets to the end. It goes back to the beginning. It should change. It should now plot in green and it clears away the graph that was there before. So if there was a higher reading, um, it will get erased. So you can see an accurate reading of the current temperature. So let's have a look at how the code works for the thermometer project. So at the beginning, it initializes the screen, it clears it, clears all the memory, fills the screen with a white color. You've got predefined colors in here. The color codes for this LCD display are a bit weird and we'll have a look at that in a minute. So you've got a choice of color of predefined colors that you can use. You can use other colors, but as I say, the color coding is a bit peculiar. We've got variables for maximum and minimum temperature so we can keep track of those. Um, we've got variables to track the color because what we do when we scroll across, it's black at first and then it goes green and it alternates black and green. So we keep track of that with these variables here. Uh, when you press button A, that will reset the maximum a minimum temperature if you want to set it back uh, to the current temperature. But the main gubbins of the program is running in a forever loop here. So we set the temperature variable to be the current temperature. This bit here sorts out keeping track of the maximum and minimum values. And then what we do here, we've got we're drawing rectangles. Why are we drawing rectangles when we've just got text um, and lines appearing? Well, 
if you just write text on the screen and keep updating it in the same place, it will just write over it. So you have to kind of clear it. It's the kind of thing that you might not realize um, without sort of exploring the, some of the nitty gritty of how displays work. So we draw a rectangle in white to write over the text that was there before, before we write the new values. Um, we then, this is the bit that shows the text on the screen. So we show the current temperature, the maximum temperature and minimum temperature. And we do that in different colors, current temperature in black, uh, max in red, minimum temperature in blue. And then this is the bit that updates the display rather than updating the whole display, which is really slow. We just update the area where the text is. You could speed it up by only doing that update if the numbers change. That would be a good way of improving this program. Um, we then draw another rectangle. This is the bit where the graph is. So this is clearing out the old bit of the graph, ready for the new line to go in. And we draw a line that starts um, at the X position that uh, we increase the X position uh, as we go along. It keeps increasing each time. Uh, and we draw it up as far as 128 is the bottom of the screen and we subtract from that the temperature multiplied by two to give uh, a different length of line depending on how um, high or low the temperature is and the color is chosen here to be either red um, sorry to be either green or black alternately so that's the code that sort of alternates between green and black colors and this bit of code here is the bit that updates the display where the line is so we only draw that bit of the display and update that. So that's a maximum minimum temperature project. I've made another project, which is a kind of paint program. So let's have a look at that in action. This is the uh, little paint program I made with the WaveShare LC color LCD display. Um, it works a bit like an Etch-a-Sketch, so you tilt it. So if you tilt your micro bit up and down, left and right, the line moves around accordingly. So it's like a little ball moving around the display and if you press button b you can change the color so it cycles through some preset colors so it's gone to magenta and then it, we've got yellow lines if you can just about see that and we should have green there we go green lines appearing next color is blue uh, it's quite difficult to draw a decent picture of this but it's quite good fun could be the basis of a game as well uh, next color after blue we have cyan and then we have black and then after black we go back to red again and of course in true etch, etch a sketch style to clear the display you shake it and it goes back to the beginning again let's have a look at the code now to see how the paint program works so just like with our thermometer at the beginning we initialize the display and we create an array of colors because i want to be able to click through different colors so i've made a, a variable array here called color uh, it's got all the colors preloaded in it um, and we've got a number to track where we are in the color uh, array so it's called color index and we set that to zero uh, i created a function here to initialize the display to sort of clear it all out and put the um, cursor or the dot back in the middle of the screen um, I put that in a function because we need to do that at the beginning of the program but we also want to do that when we shake it so like a um, like an etch -a sketch we want to be able to shake it and clear it so on shake we're going to initialize it. it's going to clear the screen button b will change the color so it cycles through uh, the colors it increases the color index number and obviously if it gets to six it sets it back to zero again to go back once we get from black we press button b again it will go back to red and cycle through all those colors let's have a look at how the main part of the code works it we use the draw point block here so this draws a blob uh, three pixels wide so it's nice and big so you can see it and we just update that part of the screen no point in updating the whole screen we're only going to update the bit that we've actually just written uh, and then we've got some um, if statements here uh, to make the tilting work so these blocks here if the acceleration uh, it goes in the um, less than 70 in the x-axis that means you sort of tilted it left if it's greater than 70 you've probably tilted it right and up and down in the y-axis uh, to change the x and y variables um, we've got a little bit of um, handling there to make sure if you get to the end of the screen either end of the screen it doesn't drop off it will come back the next thing i'd like to do to improve this program would be to uh, add some way of changing the size of the blob so probably button a would be the thing to do there and maybe we could cycle through an array of different numbers or we could just make it get bigger up to a certain amount and then get smaller again 
have a little look at the color information. So the color table is really odd because I had a, I, I wrote a little program to cycle through lots of different colors and I couldn't work out for the life of me what was going on. I looked at the drivers for this, the actual driver and the hex. It had a four digit hexadecimal code for each color that didn't seem to make any sense at all. Couldn't understand it. White was FFFF, which made sense. Black, 0000. zero, zero, zero. But then red was F81F and green was 07E0. Couldn't really work out what was going on. Turns out that a lot of LCD displays, and this is no exception, uses something called RGB565 color encoding. This is a really weird color scheme. It uses 16 bits to encode the color. But as you might realize, 16 doesn't actually divide by three. So you can't get three equal channels of red, green and blue out of it. So what it does, it uses the first five least significant bits to encode blue. So five bits to encode blue. It uses the five most significant bits to encode red. And then that leaves you with six bits left over to encode green. So it's not equal. Green gets an extra bit. Why is this? Well, it turns out that it's probably because the human eye is better at detecting different shades of green. Uh, probably something to do with evolution and growing up, you know, around plants, I guess, in the natural world. You know, trees and plants tend to be green. So our eyes are actually better at distinguishing shades of green. And so if you've got an extra bit, because you can't divide 16 bits by three equally, which channel are you going to give it to? You're going to give it to the green channel. Sort of makes sense. Um, paint program, I think is quite nice because it leads me to think that actually you could probably make a game with this. So uh, that's probably going to be the next thing is I'm going to try and make some sort of games. Um, if you've got any ideas for what I should do with this LCD or if you've got one yourself and you want to try it out, be, I would absolutely love to hear from you.